Uh, but we didn't know if last year's attendance was a fluke or just this year everybody just needed to get the heck out of the house and, and go to something because we all had been locked up for so long that we just wanted to get the heck out of the house. I know that's how I thought. I'm an extrovert and literally being locked in for COVID made me climb walls. I wanted to do something so bad for me. So I'm assuming, we assumed last year's attendance was kind of that and we kind of chalked it up as we were 16,000 in 2019. We were expecting to grow to about 18,000 in 2020, 2020 before everything. So when we hit 23, we're like, you know, let's look at the average growth. Maybe this year for 2022, we might push 21 instead of the 23. We'll get back to the, the more natural growth. So we held off doing the expansion this year because we just didn't know whether, again, last year was a fluke, uh, just with the extra excitement, or if, Last year was just uh, the signs of things to come, right? Um, and if you were here on Saturday, you kind of realized it was the sign of things to come, right? Uh, Saturday this year was up 40% over last year's Saturday, I think is what the final numbers were. We had just Saturday badges printed. We had 5,000 Saturday badges printed. And we went through 1,200 wristbands to get us to at least cover everybody who just had Saturday badges. That's no full event. That's just people who came in just for Saturday badges. Uh, desk space to, to be able to get more things done. 
Um, so and that, that all was uh, brought to you by the, the expansions in the hotel that we had over the, the past several years. Uh, and I have to say, if you've been with us for years and you've been here before the expand before the renovations, this hotel has done an amazing renovation with the first floor, the hotel rooms, and new carpet on the second and third floors. This newer, lighter carpet is a godsend and just makes room so much brighter. So if you were here before and now you're here there, please, if you can, jump on their, their social media page or if they have other places, give them a good review because this team, this hotel team, is one of the most elite teams we work with at all the events we run. Uh, you can't imagine what we put them through over the weekend from a hotel standpoint. Um, and, and, I'll, and I'll digress for a second just as a, as a funny uh, kind of quip for the hotel. Um, on Saturday, we were pushing the numbers. And we were really pushing capacity uh, in the hallway at the, the 1.30, 2 o'clock time frame. And the one hotel gentleman came up and said, hey, we, we need an idea of how much you're putting through because we might need to see if we need to cap uh, the, the vendor all start aligning to make sure that we're not having too many people with a fire code. And I said, sure, let me get you the numbers. And, and we kind of talked. And I went up and did my thing. And I went back down after I walked the floor because I'm like, OK, well, let's look at the floor. It was a busy time frame. Let's see where the, where the congestion is. And I went back down to him and I said, hey, I've done some walk around. I have some ideas. I think we can maybe kind of help us with the flow during the time. And I'm like, if you have any other events that are here at any time during the year that have our numbers and you can kind of let me know what they do differently, uh, please let me know. And he looked at me and he goes, there is no other event your size here. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of got a good chuckle at that. And it, it just, but it just shows you how much this hotel loves us. And honestly, the, the entire team here is just amazing. So if you can, please give a big round of applause for you. expansion but before I forget because I'm going down that path um, if you are event support or staff here at the convention over the weekend please stand up
in their resume. So don't think doing even a four hour in our uh, uh, position at uh, any convention, right? Not just ours, any convention is not much because there really is something that uh, a lot of uh, new, a lot of people now are really are looking for. They're looking for the community aspect a lot more too. Uh, so don't be afraid to do that. And we're, we need more people. We need more help. Uh, we're gonna, like I said, when we announce the expansions here in the next couple of minutes, we're we're gonna need a lot of a lot of extra help along the way. Uh, so don't be afraid to watch for the the, the post and, and reach out and let us know. Uh, like I said, four hours is all you need to do for a day to get a badge, and it helps you get in, learn a little bit of what's going on with the conventions, and, and kind of get you in, in and see if you want to uh, do the craziness it is running an event. Because um, it's not for the faint of heart. Uh, <laughs> we, we are crazy. So, with that being said, um, we are going to be expanding next year, and the room we're in now, and the room over there, which is the next room over, which is gaming, are leaving. The room you're in now in gaming is going to be turning into a large artist alley and guest location for next year. Because I want to try to make it fair, and we'll talk about vendor hall next. Because I want to make it fair, we will make an announcement on Wednesday on our, so on our social media to let you know exactly when we're going to open up sales for 2023. So that way everybody knows when it's open, so you can sit there and attack our website when it comes live, whatever positions are open. Um, God bless you for the quicker clicker who can find to get the, the artist space. Um, so this will all become artist space. All this back row here is going to be guest stalls. And then outside in front of the artist space is going to be where we're going to have the new creator's corner and special booth area to drive people. We, we were trying to find a way to separate the two floors and so that we don't have the crazy pack in the vendor hall. Now we're hoping that we're going to have about a 60-40 split. The vendor hall is probably going to always have a little bit more people than the artist space. But if we can take the current vendor hall of trans, uh, staff to kind of flow and put about 40% of it down here at any given time, that'll help us naturally grow because now we don't have to worry about so many people being up in the vendor hall that the fire marshal will look at us and go, you need to start clicking this door, right? So where are these people going? Oh, we're just not going to do anything with them. We're just going to say anything. Tony, Tony's like, no, I don't think so. Um, so five years ago, Tony Panetta and, my, and myself sat down, he's my gaming director, and, and we had grandiose plans for the, the gaming room. Um, and, and I sat down with him when he came into the position, and I told him what I expected of gaming. Um, my expectation for gaming is that it's inclusive. And what I mean by that is, is I've always wanted to learn magic. I really have. The problem is, is when you walk into some shows, the magic table looks daunting. It really, it, to me it did, it scared me, because it's, I, I'm as a noob, I mean, literally I am a noob when it comes to, 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 to card games, in that matter. And I never learned it, because I was always afraid to sit down at those tables and say, okay, I know nothing, I realize you guys have been doing this probably since the beginning of time, please just, I'm a little peon, teach me how to become a, a magic guru, right? Um, and, and I never did that, and the reason why is I was, I was afraid, I really was. And I, and I challenged Tony that I wanted my gaming room to be the room that if you never picked up a, a game before in your entire life, I want someone to walk in and be able to say, hey, I want to learn magic. And Tony's like, let me get a group together for you and let's, let's get you started on your way to putting your, your new character together and everything else, right? And he really ran with that. And, and, I, and I think, when I look at our gaming room now, um, it is probably the most inclusive gaming room I've ever walked into, and the most inviting uh, to not be scary. And, and it is scary, it really is. For, for us that have been the, the PC players of the world, 
to say, hey, you know, I, I, I want to learn something new. It's, it's really scary a lot of times if you walk into some of these bigger gaming conventions or comic cons that have the gaming tables because there are some guys there that are probably 350 years old and your character can probably look at me with just a gaze and kill me, right? <laughs> And I don't know if that's true, I don't know if that's, I'm saying the right things, but I'm just like, because I still to this day, I'll tell you, I've never sat down and played Magic, and because it was, I, now that I run the shows, I don't have a chance, but I never got that opportunity. So, we really did an amazing job by doing that, and we did a really well job, a really great job with, on the casual gaming side of the arcade as well, is making it inviting, and, and, and making it so that you can have a place to relax and kick back and just play games. Like, we have all those arcade games in there, and I get to play Metal Slug for the first time since I was a teenager, and I was the happiest man in the world when those things were delivered, because I literally kept one of those games in my house for half the year to play all the old arcade games that I haven't played in forever. And I go in and I look over at the arcade systems, and you see them all being used, and you see people playing all these old games that they never got to play with. Uh, but what we really couldn't do with the space we had was bring in the next level of all more, more games and more local groups to run some of these events, and then also bring in the tournaments, which we kind of do now, but we don't do it at the level that we want to do for the hardcore gamers, right? So that's the area that we really want to expand. Well, we can't do that here because we just didn't have the space. So we walked the, the locations here. We looked at multiple hotels. Uh, we talked to multiple venues. And we, we found a resting spot that is probably the best location for us overall to expand and grow. Um, so for 2023, we will be launching a new gaming convention that's tied to Soliton. Um, and what's going to happen is, is you can still come to Soliton, and we'll call this for the rest of the conversation Soliton Prime. So if you're here, your, your badge gets you everywhere in the world. Uh, but we also are going to offer a lower price badge just for gaming. And you can let all your gaming friends know that, hey, you've never come to a bigger event because it costs too much and you just want to sit down and game. We are going to be offering a lower price badges for just the gaming side of the convention if you just want to come on the gaming side. It'll have its own curated vendors um, and its own curated artists. So that way it's really focused. But um, what I want to make sure is people understand is, is the gaming convention that we're going to do that's, that's basically solid um, is not a vendor show. Uh, this is not just another vendor hall with some gaming around it, right? Um, this is a gaming convention with some vendors in it. So if you're going to come to the, the new gaming area expecting to see 40 booths and, and 60 or 70 artists, that's that's not what we want to do. We, we want to put on a really, really good gaming convention that's tied to the show. So we sat down, we talked about names, and we came up with Solid and Slam. <laughs> so starting for 2023, uh, it'll have its own website, so you can buy your badges on there. We'll also have the badges on the Solid and site as well that you can buy, so there won't be any confusion. Um, and it'll be available for you guys to, to start to expand into there. If you have friends that have never gone to the show because they're just a gamer, this is your spot. They're going to have their own guests. They're going to have every. They're going to have their own little thing. So it's going to be. I, I want to call it a mini gaming con because right now Tony right now has on average over the entire weekend about seven thousand attendants just in the gaming room over the entire weekend. So we figure with the move, people might not go for the first year as much between the two locations, we assume probably about five to 6,000 attendants is what we assume will go over there. So we will be at the Renaissance starting next year for Solitan Slam. They've been really receptive. Uh, we're actually doing a walkthrough with all the senior directors on Tuesday to, to go through the space to kind of uh, add a little bit more because we have a couple other areas we want to do. Um, and it's 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 been a lifelong dream for me to make this gaming get bigger. Uh, and I know Tony's the same way. Uh, so uh, please, uh, when you see the announcement, which I will literally hit post as soon as I walk back to my computer, to my computer after closing ceremonies. Uh, if you want to help us, uh, if you're on social media this evening, please share it. Please let people know that uh, this is the announcement that's going on. Um, get the buzz up. And, and again, 
we all know someone who wants to get into gaming on the, on the tabletop side that hasn't. And, and if you know those, let them know this is their show. This is their show to finally get into gaming and enjoy the craziness that is tabletop gaming and arcade gaming and console gaming. We're expanding all that, plus we're parking with uh, multiple storefronts here in the, the Phoenix area to help with picking up some of the uh, higher level uh, tournament play, uh, both on the arcade side and on the table side. So watch for information on that. that that's going to be part of the Blitzkrieg uh, post that's going to be happening over the next 12 months as we kind of get everybody going, right? So that's all we, I, I got for Salvo Slam for the update, the, and uh, I would say just please watch for more information, share, help us, help us make it grow as well. Uh, and if you have any questions, we probably will try to set up kind of a, a question forum area so we can start to gather questions so we can start to answer them so that there isn't any confusion. So what about this room? This is a room that always gets packed. And this is a room that, even on closing ceremonies for the first time, literally has no seats available. Um, and, and Masquerade fills this room up standing room only, and we have people, unfortunately, we have to turn away because we don't have the space. So, uh, Joe Sakamoto, who is my international um, guest relations director, and I have sat down and had plans for years on what we were going to do. Um, and this location will be moving to a larger location at the Renaissance as well, starting next year. And what that will give us is allow us to have large guest programming here in the Canto, which is what we already do already. Um, but it's going to now open up our next phase of the um, MPE Live, which is our live programming that goes on in here that we have fans. Uh, we will be having two nights of concerts uh, for both regional and international bands on Friday and Saturday night, specifically around a headliner and two or three bands leading into the headliner each night on Friday and Saturday night, and then capping off the entire night with the rave that if you went to them this, this week was the largest rage we've ever had in our entire existence. <laughs> our rave on Saturday night had almost 500 people to 600 people in it during the, the, the prime time. And what's even more amazing is, is we probably had about 400 plus people almost after one o'clock. And that's not normal for us. We usually start to slow down around 1231 o'clock. Um, so I have to commend, and I think I see him, uh, our, our new rave manager that we have. He's done an amazing job. Thank you. So that's the big expansion, and then what's going to happen next year is we're going to see um, what happens at the Renaissance. Uh, so if you're going to be in the masquerade next year, you might want to get the hotel room at the Renaissance instead of here, even though you can come here for your, get your badge for here, because if you've got a big outfit, you probably don't want to stay here and then walk over to the Renaissance and you're, you're big flowing down. So, and we're going to have all that communication and education as we go along so there isn't any confusion along the way. Uh, we're going to be working on security and um, uh, sandwich board signs and everything between the two locations so that you feel safe in the evening if you are here at Salvatin Prom and you are going back to the Renaissance for the evening to stay. Uh, that's a lot of uh, the internal operations work that we're going to be doing over the next 12 months to kind of let people know um, what we're planning. Um, we are probably going to, uh, not probably, we are going to talk to the bike cart people who drive the, the I don't know what exactly they're called, uh, but they're, 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 do they call them that here? I don't. I don't want to say that if that's not the term that they use. Um, but we're going to talk about them. Then you've seen here from PFF, right? The, 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 the bike people, the drive people around. We're going to be working on them to see if we can get them set up for the weekend to help with transportation between the two locations as well. Handicaps. Is that what it is? Okay. Thank you. Handicaps. Uh, so uh, we got a lot of things going on, and you can just you can just hear the, the amount of sheer work that we're, we're planning for next year. Uh, but it's nothing we can't do, and the team can do it easily. But that's why we said we want more people here to, to 
that help us on the staff level and on the event support level. So if what you've heard excites you, um, or if you want to just, again, get a little bit involved at some level, uh, please reach out to us, watch for our posts. We're going to probably start opening up staff positions and event support positions probably in early, in mid-October, early November. That's how early we're going to be filling the positions. Um, so, but if you can do anything for us as you start to see us roll into 2023, share all of our posts and, and let people know about the new location and let people know about the, the new larger gaming experience that they're going to be able to get. Um, and please don't hesitate to just ask questions on our social media if there's confusion, uh, just because we want to make sure that if people have questions along the way, the world we're getting those answered. Because uh, the worst thing we can do is uh, do this expansion and someone goes to the Hyatt expecting us to have programming there and they're lost because, well, we thought you were going to be at the Hyatt, right? We're not at the Hyatt, so shh, don't say it. Um, but, but it's just those things. We want to just make sure that we're, <coughs> we're educating people well enough that they'll let people know that that's all happening. So uh, that's our big expansion announcement. Uh, I am excited. I've been waiting for this for multiple, multiple years. And, and I can't say enough about how great your experience is even going to be better next year with the, the bigger location that we're across both locations and the more guests that we're going to bring since we're in two locations and just the sheer amount of programming that we're going to have over the entire weekend. So uh, that's our big uh, expansion announcement, guys.
have At Home Cafe.
first time. Thank you. Yeah. 日本に帰る前に一言皆さんにお伝えしたいことがあります。
This is my event in Appleton. I want to thank Greg for having me back again. The last time I was here was in 2018. Uh, a lot has happened since 2018, four years. Uh, it's really good to be back here. Uh, I saw a lot of amazing cosplayers this year, so I want to thank everybody who votes for me. Uh, if I didn't get you, I apologize, but I, from what I saw, it was just an amazing assortment of cosplays from old school to like modern day cosplay. So I just want to say thank you and keep up the great work that you do. Just have fun cosplay. We're all here to have fun and just do your best. And again, thank you, Greg, for having me and to the staff. Hope to see you next year. Thank you. Creators, 
We want to place a preference on that, but even if you're an out-of-stater, test it out. What we're looking for is people who can put on a good booth, but also maybe a, a panel or two. Now, if you're shy, and that's okay, I actually host one of the Ask an Artist panels. I will guide you through the process. What we want to do is develop artists. Um, there's a big, huge community here that is underserved, or sometimes people don't know that it's out there. So, uh, like Greg was saying, while we're looking for staff members, I just want to kind of give you guys an insight to how you can become a part of this community. So, going back to the ancient times of 2009, I was a simple artist alley artist, 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 and I wanted to create my own comic books, but I didn't have the team ready. So I knew if I go where artists are, I'd go find some people. So fast forward, I don't know, 20 years, whatever it's been, I now have artists to work on my comics. But I also have lifelong friends. So I accidentally became the art director by being close to all of them. That was my plan. Um, all the comics that I work on, I didn't know who was going to work on them. I met them here. So if you're looking for friends, family, community, uh, co-workers, People who can hire you. I was looking for artists to hire. I can't draw, I'm a writer. Um, you'll find it here. But the biggest thing is, and I don't want to get too emotional, but we are a family, you know? I've known these people for way too long. Way too long. <laughs> um, but you know, the life has its ups and downs. And they've always been there for me to back me up. And I, I bet that a lot of you guys, like me, don't have certain friends or family. You gotta make your own sometimes. And I'm telling you, if you give us your dedication, we will give you a family. So if you're looking for friends and family, at the very least, we can offer you that. I'm living proof of that. Everyone on staff has that. It is the most welcoming, accepting, weirdo bunch that I've ever met. Um, I can't wait for the staff party tonight. It's usually off the, off the chain. <laughs> no, no surprise. Um, but yeah, I just want to tell you, if you're, if you're here at the show, and like Gregory says, if you weren't able to make a friend, reach out to us. We're always looking to make friends. And if you want to work with us, cool, you might get something out of it. What I got out of it was people to work with professionally, because I didn't have that. Like I said, I'm a writer. But because I have a pretty good eye for design, Greg pulled me into all of this to be the art director on accident. And uh, so what I was going to ask you guys is, did you guys like the badges this year? So in addition to Artist Alley or Creative Corner people and potential vendors or people we can uh, work with, I am also always looking for badge artists. So just to kind of demystify the process, what I'm really looking for is unique artists with a voice. I want to see a portfolio, I want to see what you can do. I try and theme every show's badges differently. So to give you a preview of the next year, Sago's badges for next year will all be tarot cards. So, the ones that we're working on for Pinichi Law right now, if you watch Food Wars and how they do like the food porn scenes and stuff like that, it's all Japanese. Um, the glorious badges are characters who have a very well-known weapon or like thing, and that's like the primary thing. So like uh, Death Scythe is uh, Guns and Death Scythe is going to be one of them. Uh, probably Salem, Guam, you know, things like that. And then for Safak in May, we're doing elemental characters that are not related. So wind characters, fire characters, uh, dark characters, earth characters. I have them all planned out through 2025. Um, so there's a lot of really cool stuff, but we start making this year's badges next week. So we work way in advance because I want these to be special. I don't want throwaway stuff. When I was just an attendee, I always loved the branding of shows. I loved the badges. I have over 100 badges on my closet door. I love to collect them. I'm such, a, I'm such an obsessive. I will order them on eBay for shows I don't go to just to see badges. And so when I, was, when I make ours every year, I'm looking to do something different. So this year it was playing cards, and then Greg also wanted me to redesign the front and back. So we redesigned the whole thing, again. So it's the third year we've done that. But it's a fun challenge. What I'm asking for for badge artists is people who are up for that kind of a challenge. Because the art I'm going to show you, all of them, 
while they did a great job and they're great professionals, we probably went through five rounds of edits a piece because it's kind of an assessment. And it's your first go around is probably not your best. So if you're open to a collaborative process and you want to improve in, as an artist, I will cultivate your art and then I will feature you on 30,000 badges. So, um, I know you may not have got to see all of them, so what I did at the last minute is I blew them all up and printed them, so you guys can take pictures right now. So if I can get like eight staff members to help me out real quick, I want to show off all the badges you can see here. Staff work is never done.
But today, when Greg says some of them, you say coffee. Okay? Every single one of you in the house. When Greg said, so much 
Jesus, Salvatore, 20, 20.